Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and we are here for some pretty exciting updates and some new update and DLC content news. I am so excited. But first things first, oh my goodness, everything is different in Fernville now. I am trying very hard to get used to the new controls. Everything, ah, there we go. So right click will kind of rotate you around. And look at this. So everything is different. They have done like some major overhauls. I have been really impressed actually with how engaged the um, developers are with the community because they're really kind of keeping the community in sync with what's going on. Oh my goodness, is that? Oh, I thought it was for some reason. I thought it was like a baby um, capybara, but no. Oh, and we need to replenish our fish. I wonder who's eating the fish. That's a pretty good question. But yeah, I thought that was a baby capybara, but it was not. But yeah, so there's been several changes to the game. I'm still kind of trying to adjust because controls aren't what they used to be. You get, ah, there we go. You can move around and hold down the right mouse at the same time. Just for those of you who might be as confused as I am. <gasps> Look at some little babies! Ooh, jeez! See what I mean? Like, still getting used to controls. Oh my goodness. Look! Oh my gosh! Babies! Whoa! <laughs> So yeah, patience with me please while I kind of adjust to everything because things are quite different and I want to get in. I want to see the babies. <gasps> Look, he's under a little leaf. Oh my gosh. Whoa, no. <laughs> okay, he's under a little leaf and he looks so cute and you can now like take screenshots that get saved to your steam. Which is really fun. Look at him run by. Look at the little ones run by. So how are you little guy? He's doing good. Oh, what's this? He has a guard from being eaten or something. I wonder what that symbol means. So there's a whole bunch of new symbols. There's a whole bunch of new ways that you can kind of interact with everything. So if I seem a, bit, a little bit like, what's going on? That's why. Gameplay options. Edge scrolling I'm going to turn off so that I can stop like zipping away when I'm trying to look at adorable little agoutis. There we go. Phew, all right, so that is making my life easier already, but yeah, so there's lots of new things like up here You can see this little alert button and I think that'll just tell you. Oh, they cannot reproduce <gasps> I wonder why is that because there's not enough of them. Oh, there you go And so if you want to kind of zoom out you want to face down all right So my Kota Mundi cannot reproduce because I think there's only one individual left So let's go ahead and see. Oh my goodness. All right, there's been a lot of changes. This is nice. Ooh, what's this? Okay, the consu this consumer can eat tough life forms. Oh, that's so cool. And what does this say? This consumer is tough to eat as an adult. It can only be eaten by a consumer with an extra tough buff. So the ocelots cannot eat my yellowfoot tortoises. The mule deer can eat tough life forms. This is so cool. So the jaguars really are the ones who have been eating them. All right, and we're going to put down another population of the little Cotamundis. And let's go ahead and they cannot eat tough, tough things. So that's good to know. Hey, I want to look at your biodex. Tell me your biodex. Can I not look at your biodex super easy anymore? Is that going to make things a little awkward? No, I don't want to place Kodamundi. I want to, I want to learn more about, oh, oh, wait, I want to learn more about the Kodamundi. Oh no. <laughs> All right. So this might be kind of interesting. So yeah, they're doing tons of upgrades to the game. So if things seem a little different, that's why I want to look at your biodex for current outload. Okay, well, we'll have to figure out how to look at our Kodamundi's biodex in just a minute. Okay, and there we go. And zoom in. And all of our sleeping Kodamundi! There we are. Whoops, and hitting the wrong buttons. All right, I want to look at you guys. There we go. There, all right, so I'm figuring out the screenshots. Because pictures are important. They help us to chronolo like keep a chronological diary a record of what goes on in our populations so that's interesting we're learning a few new things i wonder if the plants have any new symbols too like if they're super tough and can't be eaten or things like that they've been doing lots and lots of upgrades and speaking of those upgrades you guys we are here in fernville today and to celebrate i'm actually going to smack down a bunch more pineapple and ferns because hey we're in fernville of course we need more ferns in fernville plus the papayas maybe because we need more food too maybe this will be good food for the Kodamundi. Oh, and we better go check on our peccary island, our island of pigs that we had gotten started. But yes, speaking of updates, this Friday, they are releasing the very first download content, the very first DLC that is going to be available for Taito Ecology. And I'm really excited because it's going to be the Himalayas. They're going to have little red pandas. It's going to be awesome. Oh my goodness. Thinking about red pandas actually makes me want to get down here and kind of walk around with the mule deer. Wow, these are pretty. I mean, just look at this, you guys. Look at the way we can just sit here and like admire them. 
as they work their way through all of the beautiful ferns. This is so pretty. I love it. I wish I knew how to turn off. I kind of want to turn off all of the markers when we're down here because it's really hard to get like a cute picture of them when it's sort of right in our face. But there we go. All right, we're working on it. We're working on it. So how are the mule deer doing? Looks like they're doing good. They can eat tough things. I can't look at their biotex from this angle. How do you open my, I want my, oh wait, we're just gonna have to come over here now from now on and open up their biodex, I think. So mule deer, mule deer. I want to refresh them with they, or marsh deer, excuse me, not mule deer. That's a totally different thing. All right, herbivores who eat mostly leaves and roots, and they are in the Amazonian rainforest biome. I believe they're renaming all of the biomes because there's several different types of grasslands. So now they're going to call it the Great Plains grasslands. Oh, what's going on over here? Cannot reproduce my ocelot. How did I lose an ocelot? That's unexpected. And it's not overlapping with any other ocelot populations. Where is my other ocelot populations? I swear, I think those jaguars are just like ripping through. Yeah, I cannot reproduce. There's just one tiny juvenile goatee who's kind of clinging to life over there. These guys are just like very fierce. They're just tearing through everything. Are they tearing through my little population? Is this where the island was? I could have sworn. Didn't we build up a huge Kodamundi island? Like a huge island of... I... What? I could have sworn we built up like a gigantic island and it was just covered with with everybody and they were all hanging out over here. We turned this whole island or some island was that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we turned this into the island of pigs. What happened? Did I lose like so many things? Oh my gosh, I think I lost everything. I think I lost everything over here. <gasps> they like starved to death? What? Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, we're going to have to correct that. I guess I'm just going to get started on putting down papaya trees and ferns. I, I am really stunned by that actually. So, huh. But yes, the new DLC is coming and we are actually going to have red pandas. There's going to be elephants. There's going to be rhinos. It's going to be absolutely amazing, you guys. I am super excited. So it looks like what they're going to do is they have lots and lots of different biomes in mind. They have lots of different animals in mind. Some of you guys say that you actually have an update. And I think that's for like um, the tablet version of the game and not for the PC version. I'm playing on the PC version. But some of you guys have an update that actually adds adds in hawks, like adds in hawks and birds to the grasslands, which would basically save not Kansas if I could just get some hawks in there because they eat mice all day. We were actually on a walk around our real life like yesterday and we found a red shoulder hawk nest, which was amazing. And they were feeding their babies and their babies were just screaming for food. And the parents were just nonstop going out, hunting, coming back, bringing mice, feeding the babies. It was very amazing. I really, really, really loved seeing that but it was kind of amazing to see their appetites and it reminded me of how there has to be that huge platform that huge bottom layer of the food pyramid with tons and tons and tons of the little prey items for the bigger the bigger predators to eat because if you don't have a ton of them then everything just sort of falls apart all right hey hey, hey. come here title coins come here there we go all right and we'll get some earthworms placed over here but yeah everything seems to be moving a lot smoother i'm really excited about the updates and you can bet your bunches that when it comes on do 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 what else should we put over here that they could eat maybe a few more amazonian flame trees i feel like my peccaries need lots of food all right come on oh let's speed things up and that'll get us more replenished energy sooner too but yeah and you can bet your bunches that when Friday comes, we will be doing a special video for Taito Ecology showing off the Himalayas. And we might focus on the Himalaya biome for like a week and then we'll go back to rotating between the different biomes. And thank you guys so much for your suggestions for our other biomes on what to add in. Because you can rest assured I'm going to pick one of your amazing comments. I'm going to roll a random generator and we're going to add in some of your guys suggestions in fact we might even make some new biomes where we'll specifically do that in where from the beginning to the end you guys and your comments and a random generator get to determine what we put into the biome and how it survives or doesn't survive you guys know i'm a sucker for random generators so i think that sounds like a really fun idea and it would be so much fun to turn around and be like yes you you are amazing community you are the ones who have built this this biome into what it is 
I hardly lifted a finger. Like I might lift a few fingers clearly, but like the biggest things that we'll add in will be suggestions that you guys have. All right, let's put more pineapples in. And let's see, I wish I could see the fish swimming in the water. Wouldn't that be so cool? Ah, 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 ah. I think I found, we found a pineapple spot. And then I'm, I mean, I remember there being peccaries here. Do you guys remember there being peccaries here? Cause I'm still a little bit stunned that they're not here. Cause I'm pretty sure we added like the island of the pigs. I think the tapirs ate everything. I think we did not have, I think this tiny little cluster of food right here was by no means enough to support a population of hungry peccaries and tapirs. And I think the tapirs may have eaten themselves very quickly, it seems, into extinction. So man, we gotta keep an eye out for those appetites, you guys. All right, so I think we might have this balanced out. And actually, one of the other things I wanna add over here, maybe it's still inside Jaguar territory. Um, oh, not over here. Oh, look at this. We found the edge of Jaguar territory, I think. All right, Jaguar territory. Right here is Jaguar territory. Right on the edge, like over here, you can see Jaguar. And if you come over here, hang on now. And if you come over here, no Jaguar, just mushrooms. So this is, this is quiet, relaxing territory where it's just going to be mushrooms and ants and like millipedes and things like that. So I want to actually add in the tortoise. I want to give my little tortoise, we'll put him right at the very edge of jaguar territory. We're gonna put in our little tortoise right over here and he can be adorable and cute because I really have a bit of a weakness for adorable tortoises. And we'll put some over here and we'll see if this can start a tiny foothold. <gasps> a tiny foothold of tiny footed tortoises. Where are you guys? Oh my gosh, they're so cute. They're so cute, you guys. I don't know why I have a weakness for tortoises, but I do. They're just adorable. All right, so we'll let them go ahead and get their little foothold started over here. The ferns are looking excellent. I swear they've been updating the art and all of the little graphical details in the background here. All right, and that's done. Do we need a little bit more food over here? But yeah, so I'm really, really excited for when Friday rolls around because it'll be the Himalaya DLC, the Himalayan DLC. And then they're also doing this cool thing where they're donating a dollar from the purchase of the DLC to the Save Our Species or like the something like Save the World Species program, which I think is really fun because I haven't really run into many other game companies that are this in tune with actually trying to teach things while, while they provide an awesome game for you. And clearly that's the whole point of our channel, so I absolutely adore it. All right, and we're gonna add in some more ferns. This may seem excessive on like, oh, Siri's just spending forever putting plants down. But come on, you guys, those peccaries ate themselves into extinction. <laughs> Clearly, I needed to add in more plants from the get-go and I did not. So trying to balance that out a little bit. All right, there we go. We'll add in, ooh, look at all these flame plants. Yeah. And I like, I, I like how much you can cluster them. I wish you could cluster them a little bit more. All right, oh, what's this? <gasps> a group of Kodamundis has died. What? What? Who killed him? Did he die? Oh, a group of frogs has died like 13 days ago too? Oh my goodness. Jaguars are hard. Jaguars are hard, you guys. Don't let anyone ever tell you that it's easy to have a population of wild jaguars running around because they eat all of your things. You've been warned. All right, maybe some zebra plants? I'm not sure if anything eats the zebra plants. Do zebra plants have a little, let's see. A little, do, 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 do. Zebra plant, zebra plant. There we go. Food uses. The zebra plant's tough leaves are not very appealing to animals, though its bright flowers attract pollinators. <gasps> pollinators! I need to put pollinators down if we want our plants to spread around. Other uses. The leaves of the plant are very long and thick and come from a central area at the base of the plant. Rain that falls on the leaves falls directly into the plant's roots. Wonderful. They kind of remind me a teeny bit of bromeliads. And you guys know the amazing, adorable little frogs who will actually lay their eggs inside of the pools of water. The tree frogs, they'll lay their eggs inside of the pools of water that are inside of a bromeliad and they'll actually take care of their young. I think they're super cool. Those frogs are amazing. Many gardeners enjoy growing zebra plants for their striking appearance. Uh, the zebra plant only thrives in humid rainforest biomes. Do -do 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 
And it looks like that's about it. Zebra plants rely on pollinators to pollinate their bright red flowers. In your biodome, zebra plants will be able to reproduce during their first year of life. Hey, that's useful information. Do all the plants have useful information about their reproductive cycles? I kind of missed that. The zebra plant can live for about eight years with the proper resources. Oh, do they die? I wonder if the plants die off. And yeah, the zebra plant is a bromeliad or an air plant, which means it doesn't need to grow in the soil. <gasps> I would love if I could just stick these up in trees. That would be so cool. All right. Well, I think that's pretty good. I'm not sure if anybody's going to eat the zebra plants. <gasps> Are you eating the zebra plant, little tortoise? Oh, we've got a little bit of money. Are you eating it? Wow. Yeah, I think they've done some upgrades on the artwork. Um, yeah, da, 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 da. he does not eat tough things, but guess who does? The agouti. So maybe I'll add in a little population of those guys. Oh, that would be so cool, actually. I'm going to put a little population of them. Oh, wow, he's actually still in the, still in jaguar territory. Okay, no matter what we do, I think it's still going to be in jaguar territory. So let's add in a little population of those guys and see if they can breed enough to be able to spread out from that spot, kind of like the deer mice do. Because I think that's one of our things we really need is these small herbivores breeding up to the point where they always have populations branching out that can keep just one step ahead of the predators. Because right now they're not keeping one step ahead of the predators. They're ending up in the predator's stomach mix and that's not quite what we had in mind all right so i'm gonna add in the collared peccaries again and i think last time they died off because we ended up having too many of them and they ate themselves into extinction so i'm gonna try adding in just three populations one on the island and two next to the island and we'll see what happens to our fringe this time also we do have that population of yellow-footed tortoise over here too oh and then i need to get some pollinators all right so do 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 okay yeah Looks like, ah, oh, cool. You can just like hold this down. Mew. All right, pollinators. There we go. Beautiful blue morphos. And we'll get some moths over here. Some moths over here. And then why don't we go ahead and we'll stick down. Do the ants, like, do the ants ever spread into more ant colonies? Does the queen ever send out her daughters and say, go forth and like take care of the world no it doesn't look like they do so i think the ants how do their how does their population bounce back after being eaten then i have so many questions all right we'll just stick ants everywhere and then i kind of want to stick in some frogs again and how quickly do the frogs reproduce because that i have also forgotten so let's stick you come here my little my little one you're gonna go right there oh he's so tiny i don't even see him <gasps> look at how cute they are Oh, I love them. Go forth, little frogs. Go forth. Be adorable. I can't wait to see what we're going to get. Oh my gosh, look at everybody over here. There's so many animals already. But I can't wait to see what we're going to get with the Himalayan area. That's going to be so cool. All right, and let's go ahead and double check on the frogs. Does it tell me how long your reproductive... Oh, wait, I have to like click on the little guys. Like right here. There we go. 167 days until reproduction. But as we have seen a couple times, when they can actually hit that reproductive stage, then there's so many of them. So if we could have kept all of them alive, I wonder if they would have kept branching. But how do you manage with your insects? Because that's kind of my question. So you have your insectivores, the frogs, but when you've got insects that don't reproduce, they just sort of hover at a population, how does their population repopulate and how could you have say an ant population that branches off to provide growing food like continuous sources of food for your insectivores or do they recover over time i have so many questions i have so many questions and and i think only like an insectologist what do you call those entomologists might be able to answer me especially an entomologist that specializes in tytoecology all right so we've got our little peccaries down they seem happy. We've got our little tortoises down. We lost another poor population of Kodamundi because holy days, jaguars eat everything. We're about to lose these peccaries and these Kodamundis as well because holy days, jaguars eat everything. And I mean, technically, in my opinion, the jaguars should be able to reproduce, have babies, and then just continue to be super successful because they're just ripping through everything. But it does make me wonder how many populations of small mammals and things like that do you need in order to keep them sustained and not just have like these empty wastelands of nothing's alive so we'll have to look into that in the future too but all right so i will see you guys back here hopefully friday when the himalayan dlc comes out and we'll be able to savor it and try the game out with that biome so i'm really looking forward to it and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye